unsupervised method. Yeah. <coughs> okay, have you heard about uh, clustering? Pernah dengar tak clustering? Pernah. Pernah kan? Dalam pernah dengar lah. Oh, statistik. Dah, 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 dah pernah dengar lah. Good. Okay. Um, last time masa kelas fundamental of AI, pernah tak dia perkenalkan uh, this method? Maksudnya under machine learning, they are supervised and unsupervised. Pernah tak diperkenalkan itu? Ada. Ada kan? Ya, yeah, mesti adalah a little bit on that ya. Yeah. Um, I hope that you also you also have gone through the apa nama what we call the introduction <coughs> introduction <coughs> introduction uh, apa nama audio lah ya eh? audio. Okay, let me. Okay, um, so today I'm going to um, discuss on this, this uh, clustering. Okay, right. Okay, if you see this slide, yeah, so uh, under this topic, yeah, uh, firstly, we are going to look at uh, what is clustering itself. Okay, it actually has been shown in the uh, introductory uh, video yeah, uh, in the future. And then uh, um, the important part under clustering would be the dissimilarity. Eh? We are going to look at how you can you are going to calculate uh, similarity or somehow it's been known as dissimilarity. Yeah? And then uh, we are going to look at two techniques, yeah? partitioning and also hierarchical. Okay, and under um, uh, these methods will be algorithms, yeah, that can be implemented. Um, ada bunyi noise sikit, saya ke ataupun macam mana eh? Saya mute kan. Okay. Oh, saya tak boleh nak mute kan pula. Okay, thank you. Right. <coughs> um, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so um, if you look at um, uh, clustering, it's actually uh, more suitable to be um, uh, normally it's been defined as descriptive eh? because it's actually looking at the description of the uh, behavior of the data set that given to you. Okay, uh, meanwhile, what we have done on the classification is more about predictive. Okay, um, it's looking at the uh, uh, at the how we are going to use, uh, for example, the model to uh, classify or predict what would be happen uh, to this set of new data. Yeah, and we have uh, what we call uh, design uh, algorithms. We have used the design algorithms that able to make use of the prior information or historical cases like a uh, class level um, to learn about the patterns, okay? Not saying that descriptive analytics something not, cannot be used for, for forecasting, but definitely it can be used after you have learned about the, um, the data sets. Actually, you can extract uh, these patterns and this pattern will be re represented in some kind of formulation and this formula can be used in terms of uh, uh, segmenting this data into a uh, different set of clusters. Okay, so this will be the point of clustering. Yeah? Um, if you look at this uh, uh, nama, uh, illustration or this diagram, if you have a set of data, you are trying to find groups of objects. Yeah, Like this here, we have three groups and how this, uh, these objects uh, belongs to different uh, clusters or different group. How we determine it, okay, it's actually based on the similarity of each of uh, object. Yeah? And uh, the most similar objects will be uh, grouped into one, uh, cluster okay and um, if you look at um, the apa nama, uh, it has red objects and then we have gray objects and orange objects okay so the object the distance between uh, for for example um, within this object uh, object one and object two yeah will be very very close compare you look at this object and to this object 
Yeah, so um, the the distance between uh same similar object in one group is known as what we call intra cluster. Okay, so this uh distance should be minimized. Yeah, uh, it's referring to the um distance objects in same group or in same cluster should be minimized. But when we want to compare another group, yeah, another group like red, uh, red and grey, yeah. And also, um, uh, what we call apa nama, uh, orange and grey, it should be maximized. Yeah. So how we are going to know uh, the distance has been maximized and how the distance has been minimized? Okay. Um. Uh. It will be based on the description. Yeah. It will be based on the description. We are going to look further later on. But before that, this is what we can see the definition of similar. Similar is referring to the same group, yeah? And this similar will be unrelated and it will be in the different groups, yeah? So it's unsupervised. And if you look at this method, uh, this, uh, number, this methods, yeah? It will be um, um, quite robust because it doesn't have uh, to depend on the uh, class level. So means that if you have a set of data and then you do not have the prior knowledge, you we use these uh, algorithms to make a, a category of a set of a group, yeah, set of groups from the data set. Okay, so um, this, uh, this what we call methods will be uh, very popular in terms of like we found a set of data that will be uh, referring to the new species or new products that can, can you are un, unsure how to define these new products or yeah probably you might use this um this uh, method for the purpose of uh pre-processing like you have two attributes and then you want to make use these two attributes and then you want to uh, uh put it into one new uh attribute yeah so uh, like this one yeah and then you want to convert it into a uh, one single attribute yeah and so you can apply clustering and it will uh, produce some kind of a new constructed uh, 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 attribute and this can be defined by several subgroups so it is actually indirectly you are uh, performing what we call discretization yeah and also data transformation okay so remember if you look referring to back to the previous slide in, under pre-processing clustering will be another uh, appropriate methods for performing discretization and also transformation okay <clears throat> so, um, if you look at um, what type of data, yeah, attributes that can be uh, implementing under this uh, unsupervised method, it can be implemented using uh, nominal. If you have numeric, or if you have even vectors, this uh, type of data can be also implemented under the under the uh, apa nama, clustering methods. If you look at this map, yeah, this sample, yeah, 12, 12 is actually an Z, uh, one and Z is like similar, but it's actually a different object. Okay, how we see it is kind of similar, yeah, but uh, still this algorithm can identify this will be a different object, okay. So um, methods of clustering actually, uh, if we look at uh, uh, the techniques under clustering, there are two popular methods here, which is one is the uh, partitional clustering, which is looking at non-overlap. Yeah, so we are going to produce a sub clusters, uh, uh, sorry, uh, subgroups or different groups in the data set without any um, uh, what we call interrelated or some kind of uh, uh, overlapping data. Yeah, like this is two distance distinct uh, cluster and this is another cluster. So we have one, two, and three cluster. And each of the data belong to one clusters only. But when we go to the hierarchical, yeah, you will see there are um, data could be uh, fall under two cluster, but it's actually referring to the dominant and dominant. Yeah? For example, here, if you look at um, uh, apa nama, uh, hierarchical cluster, this is first cluster, and then this is second cluster, and this is the third cluster, like this one also. You could also have non-overlap clusters in the uh, in the apa nama, in the data set like this is the first cluster this is second cluster and this is the third cluster okay and this uh, representation of uh, data set or cluster can be also shown in dendrogram yeah so this is a dendrogram 
Okay, and this is also an addendum file. Okay, so real, can you see the difference? Boleh dapat tak? Boleh tangkap tak? What's the difference between these two methods? Okay. Boleh ya? Right? So, um, yeah, so so uh, our target is that today we are going to look at the similarity functions and then we are going to look at the k-means algorithm and this one will be covered after the sem semester break. Yeah? Okay, so I hope that you won't forget yeah, because we have a one break, uh, one week of break, so we will continue later on. Okay, so I, uh, if we look at the clustering application as what I have uh, uh, explained just now, is also a popular algorithm to be used for the pre-processing here. Yeah? So definitely if you can combine some of the uh, attributes into one uh, new attributes, it can be uh, reducing the data. Yeah, and then it can compress, for example, if we implemented an image, it can be represented as the vector. Okay, uh, indirectly, actually, if you look at, um, uh, remember, one of the uh, data exploration and data pre-processing, um, data visualization will be uh, for us to learn about the data, means that we look at the patterns of, uh, I mean, we look at the, uh, the, the data as uh, overall, yeah, the general data general data, the distribution of the data, and then um, the, uh, you can apply the clustering to see uh, how the data belongs. Yeah, You could, in uh, in, in terms of looking at the clustering, yeah, um, there will be lots of try and error means that uh, you could have to define how many clusters that you want to find from the data set, yeah. So there's lots of uh, experimental here. So uh, normally, um, if we look at the algorithms here, yeah, they will have a parameter known as k. Okay, what is k? K is actually a number of uh, subgroups or sub uh, of cluster that you want to find here. Yeah? So you can define whether you want to have two clusters, for example, or you want to define that you want to have three clusters and so forth. So this is by try and error. Okay. So here it will be good uh, to be used uh, for the visualization, and then we want to look at how it the effect yeah, the effect of different number of clusters to the data set. Okay, and what you need to understand as uh, as I mentioned just uh, before also yeah. So it's uh, not uh, supervised because this there is no uh, prior information being uh number be given to the data we are not using any level yeah and then um it's not a simple segmentation like we want to uh divide the data or divide the for example students information into registration groups or for example we want to divide the uh, students information into gender right? or we want to divide the student information into lock up and Locations means that if you are depending on one attributes, it's most probably not not uh, cannot be considered as clustering. Yeah, so clustering is actually um, the implementation. It can be a very robust algorithm and also scalable algorithm because it can commit with uh, different and high number of uh, attributes. Okay, so make use clustering for for what we call uh high dimensional data okay but definitely in my cases later on here i'm going to introduce um the implementation of uh of the panama of the uh similarity functions or dissimilarity functions using one attribute so this will be the fundamental uh, understanding that you need to understand yeah to have uh so we are going to have cases using one single attribute but later on if you look at uh cases is actually uh, we are not using only one single attribute yeah, when we performing clustering okay and yeah this is not a single it's not uh it's not a query a simple query yeah and it's different from the graph partitioning okay so if you look at another example of uh uh clustering um yeah it's very popular in terms of apply uh, looking at the clusters uh, set of uh, images because images uh, can be represented as numeric. So this is very, very popular. Yeah, it's very popular to be used under images. And somehow we could see that um, there are lots of images 
is not been annotated maksudnya tak ada label tak ada class information so uh, clustering would be a very popular algorithm to be used uh, on uh, on apa nama on uh, identifying the uh, subclass apa nama uh, groups of images and if you learn about machine learning there is uh, uh, currently a boom of uh, uh, deep learning methods right pernah dengar tak deep learning methods have you heard about deep learning methods pernah uh, dengar kan Uh, deep learning method like CNN and so forth. So, um, dia punya core engine under the deep learning would be based on the similarity function so which you are going to look at later on. Okay. So, this will be example of uh, example of example of clustering methods. Yeah. So, so um, the apa nama, the clustering methods can be not necessarily for data in the form of images, uh, in the form of numeric and so forth. It also can be implemented in the form of when your data is all text. Uh, okay. So how we are going to look at uh, when we have a lot, lots of text in the data set, how we are going to perform uh, cluster, apa nama, clustering. Yeah. So we will be discussed later on. Okay. Yeah. So far, any questions? Ada soalan? Contoh-contoh deep learning method ni macam Google selalu buat kan yang apa deep blue punya mesin Ya, yeah, ya yeah, betul mm -mm. Macam you pernah dengar CNN kan Convolutionary uh, Neural Network and then RNN and so on. there's lots of So dia punya original uh, apa nama original concept will be on the similarity lah because uh, this Google is performing uh, identifying the images. There are lots of images that been put in the Google. So how this uh, CNN can identify in Google Net and so forth can identify this will be a same category of data ataupun uh, same category of images. Like you want uh, and then it, it, it will be apa ni, later on produced in the form of a Google search right. So when you want to search something, uh, images related to the animal, so like you put cat and then all cats is been shown in the Google search. Okay, so how actually Google Net found this is a similar, uh, a group of data. Yeah, a group of data belongs to cat. Yeah, okay. Right, so how we are going to define this uh, clustering will be a good method. Um, yeah, definitely it's depending on the similarity calculation and also finding the similarity of the objects in the clusters. Yeah, and some of uh, some of questions there will be some lots of arguments in terms of identifying. This will be the best. Like I mentioned just now, um, uh, this algorithm might. Uh, needs a lots of uh, try and error means that you have to define how many clusters number right um so this will be a lots of agreement so which of these numbers yeah okay uh, whether there are two clusters or three clusters should be uh, number implemented uh, implemented for the data set okay Though um, the the important part, but would be uh, apa nama uh, hidden ya? Yeah? How to get the hidden patterns ya? Yeah? How to discover these hidden patterns? And definitely this will be need um, even though it's our supervised methods, but the interpretation by domain expert will be needed also here. Ya? Yeah? So for example, you have a new data on the COVID-19 viruses, right? So you need to uh, look at uh, how you are going to look at the variants of these viruses. So definitely Definitely, you you would need uh, some kind of information or knowledge uh, behind uh, these viruses. So you need to look at the domain expert that really really deal with viruses. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can learn about. Uh, you can uh, go through this. Uh, what This slide, you girl. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. Eh, boleh? Can you understand a little bit on that clustering methods? So this will be the concept. Boleh faham eh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's let's have a look at the punya uh, core. Okay. Let's have a look at the um. 
what we mentioned here, yeah? similarity. Yeah? So uh, this will be the first thing that you need to know under the clustering. Yeah? So how you're going to compute the dissimilarity between objects when we have lots of uh, types of attributes, right? So we have originally what we have done in the data understanding, we have what? We have uh, numerate, we have binary, and then we have ordinal, kan? And then the most recent one, you your data will be in the form of vectors, and also the, your data could be in the form of textual. Yeah? So we are going to look at this uh, similarity. <coughs> so, <coughs> okay. <coughs> So in the definition of similarity, similarity would be uh, definitely um, how you similar one object to another object, like me with you, okay, me and Amirul, me and what we have, uh, Dayang, and then we have uh, some of rest of, apa nama? If I'm, uh, if you compare me and Dayang, definitely we have the same gender. If you compare me with Amirul, we have different gender, but it's not suffice for us to define <coughs> ataupun to add, apa nama, um, uh, uh, to what we call declare the similarity between uh, uh, me and Amirul or me and Dayang is very high. So we have to look for more attributes like, <coughs> uh, <coughs> Okay, other than factors, we are going to look at the age. And then other than factors, we are going to look at what else? Apa kan attribute lain that can uh, associate to individuals? Gender, age, lagi apa dia? Any idea? Hmm. Any idea? Culture. Religion, okay. Culture, uh, location. Color. Hair okay, good. Hair color, hair length, and then we could look at uh, hobbies. We can have a look at apa nama? origin, and then we we could look at other profiles like uh, characteristics. Sometimes um, we want to apa nama? look at um, some kind of <coughs> uh, apa nama? Um, uh, work experience or um, uh, other profiles like uh, customer, uh, not customer, I mean uh, uh, buying patterns and so forth. So these are all other attributes that you can create ataupun you can associate with the individuals. Okay, And then um, so you could make a relation uh, between one object to another object, whether me and Amirul would be <coughs> highly similar or me and Dayang would be highly same, similar. Okay, And then um, the the range of uh, the values normally falls under zero and one. Okay, and how about the similarity? So it will be inverse to the similarity. Yeah, so it can be calculated based on the distance. Yeah, so the distance of me and Amirul very high. If the distance is very high, means that I and Amirul is not similar. If the distance is very low, means that I'm and Amiro will be similar, yeah, almost similar like that. Okay, and then, <clears throat> and um, um, it sometimes it's been known as proximity. Okay, so there are different terms being used: similarity, dissimilarity, or proximity. Okay, and but these all are about similarity, lah, Yeah, so it's been used for the clusterings. Okay. <sighs> Right. Okay. And um, if you look at the similarity or similarity matrix, it's been defined by the D functions here. Okay. Distance functions. And it will be used for any types of variables. And so it's actually very hard for us to define how similar to uh, to certain object unless this is uh, like a twin, even twin one, yeah, even twin one, actually, you could see some kind of uh, variance, yeah, for example, uh, twin A dengan twin B, yeah, uh, 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 apa nama, um, dia punya uh, rambut mungkin uh, nampak macam sama, tapi mungkin ada perbezaan juga, like my, apa nama, um, main uh, 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 anak saudara, anak saudara, laki perempuan, laki apa kita panggil? Saya dah ingat Nis. Lelaki kita pun. Ah yes, nephew. nephew. Saya ada pet of kembar lah sebenarnya. Ah, nephew. So, dia ni memang kembar tetapi memang mukanya lain. Definitely lain, tinggi lain, semua lain. Okay, so how, how we can have actually is a twin but it's a different. <laughs> different muka berbeza sama, uh, berbeza sama sekali. So, this will be 
if in that case, okay, in that case, how we can say this is uh, apa nama, in the same group, yeah, in the same family or something like that. Okay, uh, if there is object like you have same face, same suara, uh, so that will be defined in one particular group. Okay, so it's easy, it's very easy if you could have attributes that can make a, uh, show the difference between of this or showing the similarity of, of this. Okay, so um, yeah, this is again a definition of similarity and dissimilarity. Okay, so um, in term of in the context of uh, technically uh, technical, eh, technical. So we normally will have been given a set of data. Okay, so how you are going to represent the data in the in the coding or in the hardcore programming? Okay, so normally your data will be presented here, like uh, what you see here, data matrix. Okay, do you fam are you familiar with data matrix here? Are you familiar with data matrix? Uh, what does it mean by this? Matrix familiar, data matrix below. Okay, so like this is uh, actually one, one until P, yeah, until P, this is actually, this is column, Can. Okay. Data macam yang kita belajar, selalu belajar dalam uh, is it, it, the concept of data is like what you have learned also in the data uh, in the classification, which is which are the attribute, which are the which are would be the apa nama uh, records. Yang mana attributes, yang mana record? Hmm. Attributes yang mana kelabu tu? Record yang mana? Uh, uh, okay, uh, <laughs> Natasha, you kena tengok, okay, kolom dengan row, yang mana record, yang mana attribute? Eh, uh, uh, yang mana record and attribute, yeah. Kolom dengan row. Konsep dia sama saja. Ah, okay, good. Okay, so, good. this is the same. Ah, uh, uh, there is the same concept that we have done before, means that you need to understand the column is presenting by, by the attributes. And then this is record, yeah. So, this is, as you see, and this is n, yeah, is n number of attributes, and then p is the number of actually, uh, sorry, sorry, n is the number of object or samples or records, yeah, and meanwhile, uh, p will be the attributes or factors or what we call um, variables and so forth. Okay, clear? So this is data metric. Betul tak? This is the same that we have done in the uh, data understanding and also uh, pre-processing and so forth, yeah. But if you see here, yeah, uh, normally the presented the presentation will be in the form of uh, X11. So it's actually, actually, yeah, uh, record number one for attribute one. What will be the value? Okay, and then we have record number one for attribute number two. And then we have record number one, yeah, for attribute F. Until we have record number one for attribute P. Okay, so this within this will be the apa nama the value of the record yeah the value of the records okay next what we are going to look at will be what we call the similarity matrix okay so you have to apa nama tukar sikit you punya pemahaman daripada what we have in the data matrix into a new <laughs> a new matrix this is a new matrix huh? so what what will be this matrix presenting Ya, apakah yang dia wakilkan di sini? Anybody can interpret? Ada sesiapa boleh interpret? Okay, distance di mana? Amirah Hafiz. <laughs> any, other, any other idea? Ah, kalau N ni, so this is N. N tu menunjukkan apa tadi di atas? N tu menunjukkan. Ah, and to manage the object at the records. So if you look at just now, we have column and row, which is column is been presented by attribute. Now we have column presented by the object. Betul tak? Is it? Betul tak? Okay. So when you are applying met, uh, when you have data, original data will be in this form. Okay. This will be the original form of data. Okay, and then after that, from this set of data, you are going to create a new matrix, which is called as the dissimilarity matrix. And what is dissimilarity matrix? This is object versus object. 
So we have object one, object two, three, four until n. N means that the maximum number of object that you have in the data set. Like you have hundred, so this will be hundred object. And then here also will be the object itself. We say object one until object hundred. Okay, so we have to make a comparison. This is like a comparison matrix. Lah. So object one versus object one. Is there any distance? Your guess? Ah, object one, you, ah, definitely there is ah, tak ada distance lah, tak ada beza. So that what that's why you see here, zero place here. Okay, and then you make comparison between object two dengan object two. Tak ada different juga kan, definitely. So this is will be the punya, ah, uh, the punya, uh, apa nama? Uh, what we call threshold lah for the object in the data set. Okay, but if you look at this one. Okay, if you look at it, we, we make, we, we compare object two and object one. Okay, and then you find this, uh, apa, you, you will find, for example, some kind of uh, difference. And it is defined by the formula. Lah. Okay, it can be defined by the formula. So the value like here will be mentioned, will be put lah. Yeah, kita akan letak lah value per perbezaan antara objek dua dengan objek satu di sini. This will be the, the value of the distance. Understand? Boleh faham? Boleh faham? Okay, so uh, jangan uh, uh, kita akan discuss nanti macam mana kita nak tahu value ini and then how we want to know the distance between for example for example object 3 and object 1 until so forth. So here will be uh, apa nah, some rules of thought here. Okay, um, the difference eh, becomes larger when they differ means that if uh, i am I'm, um, I'm uh, me and amirul is larger yeah, difference here yeah? so the value can be 40 50 something like that lah it depends on the maximum threshold that you have in data set okay um yeah and then it will be presented as triangular matrix and it's a single mode but sometimes they want to make use i mean uh, if you look at uh, other, uh, there are certain cases. If you look at apa nama Google, can you search dalam net? Sometimes the value also will be filled here. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's like a mirror. Eh? It's like a mirror. If here we want to compare between two and one, here we want to compare between two and one also. Definitely, it will be having the same value. Okay, right. Okay, boleh faham ya? Yeah? So, this is the concept is that when you applying uh, a, a, a clustering, yeah, or you want to find um, uh, the, when you want to find the distance, firstly, you are going to make use your data matrix and then from the data matrix, you will create what we call as the dissimilarity matrix. So, this is what I'm going to develop, uh, uh, penama, we are going to do later on. Any questions? Boleh faham? Okay. okay, I'm going to start with the similarity. Okay, functions. Similarity functions for nominal attributes. What is nominal attributes? If you look at here, it can be one, or, uh, sorry, it can be two or more states, right? You look at the um, hair color. You look at the uh, 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 color itself, red, yellow, blue, and green. Yeah, so how you make this, uh, how you identify the difference between these two objects. Okay, it can be a simple matching. Yeah, simple matching. Or if if you have uh, a larger number of binary attributes, yeah, means that two states, yeah, two states, binary is a two state, eh? yes or no. And then we have one and one and zero. Okay, but it could be, for example, in this case, it could be, um 10 nominal attributes so we are going to discuss this one later on okay first we are going to look at this yeah simple matching yeah so two objects whether i match like we are comparing gender uh me and amiro so we are different gender so definitely we have distance here okay so um and then um like we have here in the formula the distance between object i and object j okay again I is what I and J is referring to the object. We have object I and object J. Okay, what is P? P is the total number of attributes or variables that we have uh, relate or associate to the object. Okay, and M is referring to number of uh, attributes that match. I mean, uh, if uh, if we look at the gender and age, 
yeah, which um, uh, these two are matched to these two objects. So it's equivalent to two, uh, two variables matching uh, for these two objects. So M is equal to two. And then uh, what is the total of number of attributes? For example, we have four attributes here as a whole. So P will be represented by four. Okay, so this will be the distance object I and J equivalence to P, the total of number of attribute, minus M, M is number of match for both objects, divide by P. Do you faham? Okay, let's have a look at the example here. Okay, we are using only one attribute. Okay, kita buat satu attribute saja dulu untuk faham the concept, ya. So, now we have one attribute which is presented by nominal. How many, uh, what is the value of uh, zone code here? What are the value of zone codes? How many? Ada berapa banyak value zone code ni? Look at this data. Anybody? Anybody? Zero. Eight. Eight. Okay, zero. Uh, let me hear from Irman. Irman. Ada berapa banyak value of the zone code here? Ini soalan basic lah, value. Value apa dia? Irman, ada sesiapa nak bantu? Azim, Abdul Azim. Senyap ya. Jun, Jun Eka, are you here? Syed, ah, Syed, Syed boleh jawab kot. Ah, ni apa? Berapa? Uh, um. Hmm. Oh, ya, ya. <laughs> Tengok zone code tu ada berapa banyak value untuk zone code? Tiga. Okay. How many objects? Objek empat. Okay, thank you. So, kita ada empat objek di sini eh. One, two, three, four. Value zone code ada tiga saja. What are the value? Code A, code B and code C. Okay. Right. So, these are the value of uh, this uh, this column representing the value of uh, each zone code. Uh, uh, apa nama? The value of zone code to each of the objects. Okay, understand? So, object 1 having the zone code A, object 2 having the zone code B, and then 3 zone code C, and 4 again zone code A. Okay, naked eye sahaja. Mana you nampak? Yang mana you nampak adalah similar. Any idea? So, Alain, uh, pada sesiapa yang terbuka, pada sesiapa yang jawab. Naked eye sahaja. Okay, very okay, good. So, you can boleh nampak. Obviously, objek yang sama adalah objek 1 and 4. Isn't it? And then, if you look at objek 1 and 2, definitely different. Objek 1 and 3, definitely different. Okay? In the context of nominal, if same, you will get zero distance. Yeah? If the same, you will get zero distance. Okay? If not same, it will get one distance. Ini dalam konteks nominal eh. I'm talking about nominal. Okay. So and in this case pula, in this case for example, I give you example here. If you want to compare object 2 and object 1. Yeah, object 2 and object 1. Okay. By using formula. By using formula. So the number of attributes is 1. Okay. Number of matches. No matches lah. No matches. So you will get 0 here. Divide by 1. So you will get distance equal to 1. Okay. So that this will be presented like this. Okay. For uh, apa nama this okay. Will be equivalence to 2, 1. If you look at uh, uh, object 3 and 1. Okay. Different code, right? So the value of uh, 3 and 1 will be one okay but as uh, like Majid said just now okay object one dengan object four sama so is there any distance no distance 
Betul tak? Okay, the rest will be one, 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 one and so forth. Jadi faham? Okay, so this is for one attribute. Fun, one nominal attribute. Let's have an example. This is more than one attribute. Yeah, but uh, uh, senang jugalah. Sebenarnya senang juga. So for example here, we include zone code and we include task code. Okay, so this will be the matrix of zone code. This is will be the matrix of task code if you want to make difference between one attribute and another attribute, but it's actually a wrong. Okay, you need to combine. If you want to find the disparity matrix, you would need to call, uh, you need to uh, use these two attributes. So like first, for example, you want to compare object one and object two. Okay, so object one and object two. How do you calculate object one and object two? What is the number of attribute P? P equal to two. Minus berapa? Is there any matching attribute? One. Okay, one lah. Because this is same, right? Okay, yang ini tak sama. Alright, so 2 minus 1 divide by, divide by P. Two. P is a 2. Two. Two. Okay, two. and then you will get berapa? 0.5. Uh, uh, 0.5. Okay, boleh faham? Okay, and then if you want to look at a distance between D, uh, object 3 and 1, so you have to do like this. Yeah, so is there any matching, uh, matching uh, attribute? No, right? 2 minus 0 divided by 2, you will get 1. So that is how you calculate for each of the of the attributes. So, um, macam mana saya nak remove sekejap eh? Sekejap eh? So, uh, <laughs> pandai lah pasal Okay. Okay. So you will get this apa nama this uh, this uh, this similarity matrix lah. Yeah. So this similarity matrix will be presenting your task and also your your code. Yeah. Right. Boleh? Understand eh? Understand how this get? Yeah. So it's actually been calculated based on this formula. Okay, ada yang nak calculate sekarang? Okay, tak apa. Yang ni nanti kita buat. Yeah. Okay, uh, right. So this actually how you do or you get the distance. Yeah. So I have done. I I have shown you. Uh, I have put it in the slide also. Yeah. So have a look it. Have a look at it later on. Yeah. Okay. Now we are going to look at the binary. Okay. Just now we have gone through to the nominal. Okay. Now we are going to look at the binary pula. Yeah. So binary equal again. Binary is a two states. Yeah. It can be presented by zero one gender FM. Ah, uh, what else? Yes, no. Lagi apa dia? Okay. Ah, uh, true or false, something like that. Okay. So um. There will be data set that has lots of uh, binary attributes. Okay, not says not not only one attributes. Okay, so in that case, what you have to do is that firstly, um, we are going to have calculation in terms of uh, uh, the data that need to be uh, represented uh, or into what we call quantity. Kita kena create contingency table. Yeah, so the contingency table is needed here to get the count of difference. Uh, the count of, of uh, the count of uh, each of the binary value. Yeah, so like this, we are comparing object one. Uh, sorry, object I and object J. Okay, and what is I? What here? What is here? Ini apalah? Ini apa dia? What do you, apa yang you agak? Nah, ini adalah the state of your binary. Ya? Boleh? 
So it could be 0, 1 or it could be yes, no. Kalau yes, no tu maksudnya yes, no, yes, no lah. So this will be your contingency table. Yeah, If you have 1, 0, 1, 0, it will be look like this. Okay, what will be in the middle of what will be in the middle of the apa nama, the value of the table? We have QRST. And what is QRST? Q is when, Q is when the binary of uh, the, uh, apa nama, how much, uh, how many, how many, how many, yeah, uh, attribute one, sorry, attribute I is one, and uh, attribute, uh, when object J have uh, attribute uh, binary attribute with uh, uh, with uh, with one or positive or yes, okay. So how many again? I repeat the count of when object one uh, object I is one and object J is one. So this is referring referring to the Q, okay. And then R, what is R? Okay, when object I is one, meanwhile object J yeah zero. Okay, so we need to get the count of how many object I have one, yeah, one for the binary, yeah, and J have zero for the binary. Okay, so that will be um, R. Okay, meanwhile, S adalah count of uh, when uh, object I have the value of zero and object J, meanwhile, object J adalah satu. Okay, and S is for the zero and zero. Okay, so how we are going to have this one? Yeah, okay, let's have a look at example. Okay, and this will be the formula to get the distance. Yeah, the distance when um, when uh, we consider symmetry. Yeah, symmetry binary means that like gender, and then um, asymmetry binary, which is non equal. We only consider uh, QRS. No, T is not needed here lah. Uh, wait for T. Sorry, saya kena pada ni. Okay, T is not counted. T is not counted here. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a look at this. And formula will be using the uh, other formula can be used also. Here is a uh, jacket, but we focusing on this one. Eh, uh, apply satu satu lah. Kita perlu apply banyak banyak. So have a look at this example. Yeah. Okay, this will be how many binary attributes that you have in the data set. Ada berapa banyak? Ada berapa banyak binary attributes here? Okay, so we have gender, we have fever, cost, test, test 2 and test 3 and test 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 eh? We have 7 attributes, right? 7 attributes. And then for gender, okay, uh, we 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 look at asymmetry sahaja, yeah? We look at asymmetry. In this example, I want you to apply asymmetry dulu, yeah? Let's us count for asymmetry, okay? Because we have, okay, asymmetry uh, six, yeah? We have six asymmetry and all yes, yeses, yeah? Yeses is transformed into, into one. Boleh buat yang ni dulu. Okay, put it in piece of paper. Okay, put it in a piece of paper. Okay, you can have the uh, yeses uh, transform into one. Okay, so you will get this uh, table. Okay, now let's count uh, the difference between Jack and Mary. Okay. So let's first try to calculate the disparity between Jack and Mary. Okay. And applying this formula. Okay. Distance between Jack and Mary. Okay. Okay. So um, first we have to get um, contingency table. Okay. 1 and 0. 1 and 0 says that this is Jack and this is Mary. Boleh? Okay, let's have a look at Jack. Let's have a look at Mary. Dah keluarkan uh, kertas semua? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, so count for when Jack is one and Mary is one. How many? 
what is the count for Jack is one and Mary is one? Four. Nak, hmm. Macam mana you dapat four? Natasha. Okay, two, two, two. Ha. Dua, dua. Okay, dua, 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 eh. dua. So, this one lah kan. Satu, dua. So, this count is two. Okay, how about Jack is one and Mary is zero? Zero. Ya, yeah, betul. Yang lain betul eh? Betul. Agree tak betul. dengan apa yang Natasha dah cakap? Okay. Betul. Right. Okay, Jack is zero. Mary is one. One. Okay, dalam test three kan? Okay. Yep. Okay, next one zero, zero. Both zero. Three, zero. Three lah kan? Betul tak? Okay, you have this one, this one and this one. Okay, apply apply formula ni. Berapa you dapat? Jack and Mary. Boleh apply formula tu? So again, difference kita dapat ya. Yeah, to get to get distance kita gunakan Bila value of the attribute adalah different So dia akan gunakan this value and this value Which is kat sini adalah Bila Jack 1, Mary kosong And then di sini adalah Jack kosong And Mary adalah 1 That's why we use what we call here R and S Okay And then divide by the count of Ataupun the total of Q, R and S Okay, because this is asymmetric, ini tak, tak dikira. Boleh? Boleh. Okay, faham eh? Okay, so it's actually 0 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 0 plus 1. Okay? So this is for cases asymmetric. Eh? Asymmetric yang mana uh, 1 will be more important compared to the to the zero ya yeah. so kalau kalau uh, apa nama uh, that's why i'm i'm splitting gender to the asymmetry because the formula will be different betul tak okay okay let's have a look the answer okay, let's have a look at the answer kejap eh saya kena padam ni eh. Sorry ya, eh, saya tak pandai lagi nak guna betul-betul bot ni. Mana space ada saya buat. <laughs> Doktor. Ha uh ah. -uh. uh, yang untuk formula ni kan R plus S, QRS kan? Itu yeah, untuk asymmetry. Ha uh ah -uh, betul. Kalau QRST? QRST tu adalah untuk simetri. Maksudnya set, uh, gender lah contohnya gender. So saya split kan tu yang saya split kan. Uh, apa nama kita calculate for asymmetry dulu ya yeah? saya yeah, tahu final itu asymmetry ataupun tidak uh, normally you kena tengok lah dia punya probability tu berapa banyak kalau um, you can, you were given information lah ya yeah? definitely like gender 50-50 kan the probability you are belong to gender male atau gender female adalah 50-50 lah sama lah kan asymmetry Terang. ok uh -uh, ah yeah? ya alright thank you Okay. That's why yang dalam uh, fasa dalam data mining ni kita ada phase yang kita panggil apa tadi asal awal-awal kita buat which is data understanding kan? Ingat? Ya. Yeah. So dalam data understanding is very very important. There are uh, you need to look at because in this case if you look at this case you need to know this is a binary for asymmetry or non asymmetry. So you can apply the right formula for it. Yeah. Okay. So we can define which will be appropriate. So this will be the answer. Okay. Do you get the same? Yeah, do you have to uh, do the contingency table for each? Yeah, betul. Maksudnya, katakan for Jack and Mary, so you have to create a 
how to just a table. Okay, and then you want to get the Jack and Jim, so you have to redo a cottage, a new cottage as a table. Jim and Mary, so you have to look ataupun relook, yeah. Tengok balik the cottage. So the context, okay. Um, can you make can we make a conclusion here? It's actually when you deal with clustering, it's actually it's actually you make a pairwise comparison. Is that you look at the object one, object to second object and second object and then it's the iteration process eh? it's iterate the process over iterate means that if in the data set you have hundreds so you have to make comparison for each pair must you one and two one and three one and four and then two and three two and four and iterate 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 do you understand okay yes. Okay, so at the end, nanti you akan nampak, okay, those who are within this range. For example, the distance between uh, kosong to five can be included in one cluster. And then five and, for example, certain other value will be included into one cluster. Okay, so that will be back to the first uh, concept of clustering just now that we have look at, um, uh, uh, we want to produce uh, clusters, yeah? And this object will be similar to each other. And by why, by how, by getting the distance itself. Yeah. Okay? Uh, uh, yeah, before that, how you make the conclusion here from Jack uh, comparison comparison uh, pairwise here, which will be similar to each other? Yang mana lebih similar to each other? Jack and Mary. Jack, Mary. Eh, Jim, yes. Jim and Mary. Jim and Mary. Eh, bukan eh. Jack and Mary. Jack and Mary. Ah, Jack and Mary lah kan. Mary Sebab Jim. kata uh -uh, 0 0.33 ya. The most similar object will be zero. There is no distance at all. So you should get zero distance. Okay. But here in the case, you have 0 0.33. Slightly similar. Uh, yeah. Slightly similar. The rest, you could see the distance here. Okay. You could have more names here. More names. And then you will get more dis distance value. Okay. Right, so this would be the formula, okay. Uh, ini cara lah apply lah. Saya, saya, saya buat dia punya proses in the slide, you can make a reference later on. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, that will be about the apa nama, uh, binary. Okay, uh, for, for other types of binary like just now, uh, you have symmetric, yeah. So symmetric, make sure for symmetric you have to R plus S divide by, apa dia? Divide by Q. QRS. QRS. Plus T. Yeah, plus T. T. That is for symmetric. Kalau asymmetric, we consider the area yang apa tadi? Yang different saja. Apa? Uh, uh, Q, R and also S on the yeah? Okay. Okay, clear about that. Okay, clear about uh, nominal. Now we are going to look at the numeric. Yeah. So kita ada 30 minit lagi ni. Okay, nasi nak habiskan semua. So numeric. Yeah. So numeric. We are going to look at a sample of uh, distance functions. There are a lots of distance function. Okay. But I'm going to focus this one. Yeah. I'm going to do this one. Yeah. Okay, um, given to you the data matrix, this is attribute 1, attribute U, and then this data can be presented in the uh, graph, yeah, graph uh, representation, which is this is X and this, uh, sorry, oh, uh, no, 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 okay, this is not X, do we have to list this any, um, raises, okay, 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 so this is attribute, yeah. This is attribute one. Okay, this is attribute two. Eh? So if you look at attribute one, is one and two, yeah. So one and two, so this is x one, yeah. And then x two adalah three and five. So x three, uh, x two is three and five. Boleh nampak, eh? Right, and then two zero and also four five. So these are uh, space representation for this data set, yeah, given data set. And then how you going to, and if you look at uh, all given information here is presented as numeric. So when you have numeric attributes, okay, this can be dismerity, dismerity, uh, dismerity 
functions can uh, that can be used will be what we call Euclidean distance. Have you heard about Euclidean distance? Now belajar Euclidean distance. Tengah belajar kan? Tengah. Tengah kan? Okay, what is uh, Euclidean distance? Uh, okay, so this is Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance is actually, uh, for example, we want to compare this one, object X1 and object X2. So this is attribute one. Okay, and this is the second attribute. Okay, attribute two. Instead, we compare one minus three and then power two plus, okay, and then two minus five power two. Okay, and the summation will be squared two. So you will get 3.61. Okay, have a look at three. Try to find the difference between object 3 and 1. Boleh calculate sekarang? How do you get it? Macam mana nak dapat kan? X3 dengan X1. Suhan? Tak dengar lagi suara Suhan hari ni. Suhan? Tuhan, tak boleh bersuara. Puteri, where are you Puteri? Puteri? Ada sesiapa lain boleh jawab? Nawawi. Nawawi. Saya dapat 2.24. Okey macam mana Nazmi dapat S3 dengan S1 ni? Nilai yang dekat attribute tu saya gunakan dalam untuk Euclidean distance. Yang guna uh, square root. Okey. So maksudnya di sini 2 minus 1 betul tak Nazmi? 2 uh, minus 1 betul tak? Betul betul. Okey 2 minus 1 power 2 plus berapa? 0 minus 2 power 2 and the summation will be square root. Boleh? Yang lain-lain boleh follow? Boleh yeah. dapat sama. Yeah. Boleh. Alright. Okey thank sama. you. Okey. So, sama juga for compare uh, to get the distance between S4 and S2, you should able to get 4 minus 3, 4 minus 3 power 2 plus 5 minus 5 power 2 and the square root, yeah? Okay, that is how you calculate for the numeric. Senang kan? Numeric senang je lah. Mana saya punya ni eh? Saya tak ada slide selepas ni. Sepatutnya ada slide selepas ni. Okay. Right? <laughs> Tertinggal slide ni. Okay, boleh eh? Buat yang itu? So you can distance boleh, very boleh. I mean uh, example uh, common example lah. So other than that you could have uh, just now uh, Manhattan and so forth. Okay. Next I'm going to look at the ordinal. So ordinal ni you need to do some kind of representation. What is ordinal? It has rank. Yeah. So it's lots of uh, it's a lots of process here. Yeah? So your data will be like look firstly your data will be look like this. Yeah, given to you this information, we have excellent, fair, good and excellence. What you need to do is that you have to normalize the data. So excellence will be the highest rank and then good will be the middle and then fair will be the lowest rank. So you will map the uh, this information into the uh, into the order. So uh, fair will be represented by one. Okay, and then good will be presented by two and excellent will be presented by three. Okay, once you have transformed your data into this rank, okay, and this is actually a uh, numeric data. It's already a numeric data. So you can use what we call, uh, uh, you can also represent your data into another, what we call um, normalization, uh, into the normalization. Yeah, so uh, this will be the value. Eh? This is will be the value after you transform into numeric. Okay, uh, how you get this? This one is actually the 
Z representation ya. Yeah. So the rank, the current rank minus the lowest rank divide by ya. Yeah. Uh, minus, uh, sorry, divide by a maximum rank 3 minus 1. So you will get 1. Okay, and then fair will be transformed into zero. Saya terlalu sepak sepi laju sikit eh. And then uh, good will be represented by 0 0.5 and then Excel will be represented by 1. Okay, so now you already having a numeric value. So this can be represented like this. Yeah, so how do you get the distance? It's like this. Yeah, so again, this is only one attribute. Yeah. So that's why you see here one uh, to, to get the comparison between uh, object two and object one. Yeah, object two and object one. So uh, one minus zero power two and square root. Okay, for example, you have other other attributes means that you can include into the formula like this one. Okay, so this is the data matrix. Okay, and then this is what we call the similarity matrix. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then uh, the next one I would like to show will be this is when we have a vector. Yeah. What is vector? Means that your data will be in the form like um uh, like a document. Okay. And firstly, you need to define what will be the form the important keywords in the in the data. Okay. So here we have team coach. Hockey, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. 10 uh, keywords. Yeah, 10 keywords. So you need to look at these keywords. How do you define these keywords? That is, we'll be depending on the key features. Uh, keywords feature selection. Uh, okay, so uh, after you have defined the important keywords, yeah? keywords ne next, you see here, there is uh, numbers. Okay, what will be the representation of these numbers? Okay, a uh, document is represented by thousands of attributes. Yeah, and each recording of frequency. Yeah, each recording of frequency. Okay, so here is actually presenting how many, how much time, how many times teams mentioned in the document one. Okay, and then how many times coach is mentioned in document one and so forth. So it's presenting the frequency. Any questions? Believe how? Okay, so this will be uh, okay after you get uh, after you get this is uh kita panggil terms frequency matrix. Okay, uh, another matrix lah yeah. yeah. So the term frequency matrix ataupun vectors here. Yeah. Yeah, this is vectors or matrix. Okay, after you get this, then you can apply what we call consign similarity. Okay, what is consign similarity? Right, so this is actually implemented like document norms. Yeah, finding similarity document one and document two. Firstly, you have to get, yeah, you have to get document one. Uh, this is the term frequency of document one, and this is document two. Yeah, document two, the term frequency for document two, and this is what we call dot. Yeah, dot product. Yeah, the uh, document one time document two. Yeah, so five times three, five times three plus zero times zero plus three times two plus zero uh, zero and so forth. Okay, and then, okay, and then divide by the absolute, uh, the length vector of document uh, one times document two. Okay, so how do you get that one? Okay, so this is following, yeah, for this one is following like document, uh, Euclidean distance norms, yeah, which is uh, five power five plus zero power zero plus three power three and so forth. And we will get the square root of the power two. And this will be the, uh, apa nama, the vector of document one. And this will be the vector of document two. Okay, so what is consigned similarity document one and document two is dot function divided by uh, upper vector uh, document one, yeah, vector document one times vector of document two. Okay, boleh? So you just apply the formula of consigned for the document. 
Okay, so same goes if you need to look at uh, document one and document three, and also document two and document three. So you are implementing the same formula. Will you follow? Okay, all right. So, uh, so that will be all for about uh, for simplicity. Eh? So I would suggest later on you have a look at the have a look at the apa nama? Have a look at the punya uh, further uh, calculation. Eh? So that will be very very important for us to understand the process. Eh? Yeah, but definitely later on you are you are, you have lots of example. Eh? We have a lots of example. Uh, libraries and so forth definitely kalau you nak gunakan uh, uh, k-means algorithm if you want to use uh, deep learning and so forth the the packages is already there so you just need to apply it yeah <clears throat> so not worries about that but you need to understand the concept first okay boleh ya? so this will be the similarity function that used okay now uh, skip masa lagi saya nak perhapiskan in on in um in introducing you with the k-means algorithm okay boleh eh? okay <laughs> boleh tapi tak boleh tapi boleh juga lah ya okay in continuing to the uh, to the similarity, we have gone through the concept of uh, clustering, and then we have gone through to the, the calculation of the similarity for each type or different type of the apa nama, uh, different type of attributes. Now we are going to look at the partitioning approach here. So uh, under partitioning approach. Oops. Okay, under partitioning approach, yeah, there will be a popular algorithms uh, known as k-means, k-midots, clearance, and so forth. Okay, and we want for hierarchical um, uh, sum of algorithms would be Diana, Agnes, Birch, Chameleon, and so forth. Yeah, so we are not going to look at all these algorithms or this approach. Definitely, you are overwhelmed. And then, in fact, other than partitioning and hierarchical, there will be sense density. That will be great approach and so so many yeah so many uh, approaches or algorithms yeah so we will not make you too uh, uh, to overwhelm this uh, this algorithm we just focus one for each partitioning and hierarchical only yeah um this is very uh panama uh, i'm just going to introduce you with the operational i'm going to repeat it later on yeah see ini saya just nak relate kembali balik dengan uh uh formulation that we have used before in under the disparity of the object okay so um this algorithm is actually um uh, referred to the partitioning means that the data will be divided into algorithms. Eh, sorry, the data will be divided into different set of groups or objects that will be non-overlap. Yeah, so there will be no overlapping. Uh, each of the object will be belong in in one group or one cluster only. Okay, and then um, it's actually uh, uh, like what I said. Uh, is a lots of try and error yeah given a k k is actually a parameter set of partitions set of number of cluster that you want to define in the data set yeah so you might start with defining k equal to 2 and then you might want to change the number of cluster into 3 4 and so forth it can be done okay Okay, uh, what would be the procedure code yeah, involved here? You are going to see under the procedure code, firstly, it will partition uh, the object into K non-empty subsets. Instead, initially, we will define, for example, K equal to 3. And each of the uh, cluster will be uh, uh, no object at all. Okay, and then we will... Um, uh, kita panggil apa tu? Randomly select, ya. Yeah? We will randomly select, ya. Yeah? Normally lah, the process will be randomly select. The, um, uh, what we call centroids, ya. Yeah? Centroid for each cluster. 
Okay. And what is centroid? Centroid will be, for example, it could be mean or it could be any specific uh, formulation defined. Okay. But normally it will be randomly selected. Yeah. So this centroid, okay, how many centroid? Your institution, yeah. If you have a defined k equal to three, how many centroid you need to the to initiate? Ataupun you need to choose. How many centroid? Ada berapa banyak centroid? Any idea? Kita kena choose berapa? Tiga lah juga kan? Betul tak? Okay, so you, for example, you want to partition the object into three clusters, then you have to define three centroid. Instead, one centroid for cluster one, another centroid for cluster two, another centroid for cluster three. Okay, and then what's process? What will be the next process? Okay, yes, the next process is that you have to do the computation. Yeah, computation ataupun calculation of similarity or dissimilarity each object to each centroid for example or there is 10 object yeah and then there are three objects from uh, from the data set is uh, initiate for for a centroid so object one will be compared to centroid one okay and then you will get the distance of this object okay and then object one compared to the centroid two Okay, and then object three compared to, yeah, and then that this object will be compared to object three. So you will make comparison for each object, object one to central one, object one to central two, object three, uh, one to central three. Okay, and then assign the clusters to the nearest centroid. Katakan object one nearest to centroid two. So, you will assign object 1 to cluster 2. Okay, understand? Boleh? And then, iteratively, you will repeat the same process to the rest of object. Okay, so we have done assignment to object 1. So, we go to the object 2. Boleh? Okay, object 2, so we have to calculate whether object 2 nearest to central 1 or nearest to central 2 or nearest to central 3. Okay, and then if the calculations show the distance between object 2 nearest to object uh, 3, uh, uh, central 3, so we, can, we will assign object 2 to cluster number 3. Okay, and it will repeat. Yeah, in every repeat here will be yeah repetition process. Yeah, this will be the repetition or the loop process. Yeah, the loop process. Okay, and then this is only this is done uh, several times. Okay, it will be done several times. Okay. Okay, get the process. Do you get the process just now? Boleh dapat tak proses tersebut? Faham tak proses comparing the ataupun getting the assigning the object to the cluster? Boleh kan? Ah, huh? boleh kan? Boleh Semua dah lemah je. Okay. Boleh? Okay, itu baru iteration one. Okay, next. When we want to go to the second iteration, we need to recalculate will be the new centroids. So how are you going to recalculate the new centroid? Okay, in first iteration, you will be initializing the centroid randomly. But when you go to the second iteration, yeah, uh, determining the centroid will be based on the mean value. Yeah, the mean value. Okay, the mean value, right? So, means that after you have got uh, a number, new uh, set of objects in each cluster, you will get a new centroid by determining the mean value. Okay, let's have a look at another illustration. Yeah? Okay, so this will be assigning the number of cluster. We have two cluster and then we have uh, choose uh, object, any object in the data set as the centroid. Okay. 
Okay. And then assign object into the most similar, yeah, similar center. Okay. So you will form this object, yeah, these two objects, uh, two groups of objects. Okay. And update the cluster means. Okay. How do you get the update, uh, the mean value? How do you get the mean value for, for each group? Any idea? Macam mana dapat mean value ni? Apa masuk bin ni? Ha. Average. Average of what? Um, value semua dalam cluster tu. Ah, uh, 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 kan. Tetapi ya, um, uh, what what apa nama? Um, dia tak bolehlah average kan semua saja kan? So mean here, okay. Average uh, distance. Uh, so this is okay. If you look at the graph presentation, like just now in example, we have imagine this is attribute one. Okay, this is attribute two. Yeah, attribute one and attribute two. So the mean will be the mean must be reflect to the attribute. Yeah. So you should have the mean for attribute one and the mean of the attribute two. Okay. So that will be how you get the uh, new centroids for the uh, updated, yeah, for updated. So um, here you will see here in iteration. In the next iteration, there is a new centroid defined by the mean value of uh, attribute one and attribute two. Okay. After you have this uh, this new centroid, what you are going to do next? What you are going to do next? You need to recalculate the distance of each object, yeah, if object here to centroid one and centroid two. Okay. D. Okay. And then the updated version or the updated uh, cluster will be look like this. Okay. So look, uh, give attention to here. Originally, it belong to cluster one. Okay, after you have set ataupun after you have defined the <coughs> uh, new uh, centroid, yeah, it shows that this object is nearer to the cluster, this cluster rather than the original cluster. Okay, and then <coughs> after you have this, after you have this eh, new form, yeah, we call it new, new form formula, eh, a new form uh cluster what you need to do is to calculate recalculate yeah recalculate a new centroid from this set of object in the cluster okay and reassign and do that again okay how when the algorithm will stop the algorithm will stop when the object will remain in the same cluster after certain iteration. Means that after iteration 5, katakan, 6, 7 and 8, yeah, each object belong in the same cluster. No more apa, moving, dah tak berubah dah. Or that another uh, another stopping condition will be the num the centroid yeah the the centroid also do not change yeah so the so when the, the centroids do not change and the uh, uh, location or the apa nama the, the the assignments of the object in the cluster do not change so this will be the termination point okay I think I should stop over there here. Okay, so I stop dulu for for the operational of uh, the procedure code of k-means. Please have a look at the uh, example in the slide. Okay, go through the example and uh, in the slide. I'm going to discuss it later on. Okay, and do this, do this, eh? do, do this example uh, exercise. Apa nama? Uh, calculations so that you will understand it furthermore. Okay. Mana tadi? Oh, here. Okay, please do this process until uh, so that you could see or appreciate your understanding. Yeah. Okay, boleh? Boleh. Yeah.
Ada apa persoalan? Uh, another five minutes before we stop. Okay, let me... the gambar tadi so the conversation it it will be repeated it will be repeated until yeah until kat sini ada stopping condition kan there is stopping condition when the centroid does not move ataupun the object yeah the object is main, maintain in the same cluster after se several iterations Okay, boleh ke? Kamarol, okay. Kamarol. Okay, Dr. Mm -hmm. um, the rest, um, why is, why is, why is ada lagi tak? Wise. Hazik mana eh? Hazik tak ada ya? Hazik tak ada. Siapa yang ada? Hafiz. Oh sorry. Hafiz. Oh, ada dua tiga Hafiz pula. Muhammad Hafiz. Okay, lain okay? Okay, okay je. InsyaAllah. Okay, yeah. Alright, uh, please have a look at the process and then also... Also, the part yang tadi tu eh, yang saya tunjuk tadi, yang mana you kena buat exercise ni. Tolong buat exercise ni so that you can understand the process ataupun the iteration process tadi eh. Okay, the rest can be read lah. Yang ini semua you boleh faham. Uh, you can read it through, yeah. Instead, there are variants of uh, this algorithm. It, it has means and it has modes. Modes definitely for nominal lah ataupun categorical data set, yeah. And then, what would be limitation of k means would be is defend is always depending on the number of k being defined. Yeah, so somehow we have a problem in determining the number the best number of k. But this one will be discussed. Eh, uh, I'm going to further discuss about k means in the uh in the lab exercises. Yeah, to show um. Ataupun to make definition, uh, 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 to conclude how we want to make a conclusion that this is will be the best number of cluster for the data set. Okay. <clears throat> and then, okay. Okay, so that's all. So don't forget to record your attendance in the, in the, apa nama? You future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm.